So the big takeaway for our study was the identification of um, targetable genes um, with available therapies today. And um, the top of the list comes uh, PIK3CA mutations is one of the most prevalent um, that can be targeted. And there's a lot of uh, interest right now in drug companies developing these therapies and a lot of clinical trials and a lot of activity to target these genes. So I think for metaplastic breast cancer, that comes to the top of my mind. Um, outside of PIK3CA and P53, um, and maybe HRAS as well, there's not much else that can be targeted besides those genes as far as a NGS platform is concerned and mutations at the DNA level. Um, but we also do immunohistochemistry, so we're looking at changes in proteins, and we did identify a lot of um, variations f uh, from patient to patient that could be targeted as well. For example, um, EGFR, the epidermal growth factor receptor, was overexpressed in a large proportion of patients. Um, androgen receptor was found in about 8%, so I mean, there are 8% of patients that could benefit from androgen blockade therapy. So, um, what our study says is that if you do um, a multi-platform molecular profiling approach, you can find therapies that um, may be in clinical trial, they may be approved for other uh, tumor types, um, but there are options um, if you investigate a little bit further on what's going on inside the tumor. So, I mean, for our study, um, we do test for multi-drug resistance proteins. Um, that's P-glycoprotein, um, breast cancer resistant protein, and MRP1, the multi-drug resistance protein. So those three we tested for. And a large proportion of the metaplastic patients did exhibit high expression of um, MRP1 and um, BCRP, but PGP was actually kind of low. And what these uh, proteins do is they're called pumps. They're called drug pumps. And they, once the cell comes, or I'm sorry, once the drug goes inside of the cell, these pumps, if they're overexpressed on the cell surface, they can pump them right out. So the cell doesn't have enough time to accumulate the drug and have its cytotoxic effects. And so what you can do by knowing this information is you can um, choose your drugs differently. So these drug pumps have different substrates and they can exude the, the cytotoxic therapies differently. So if PGP is low, it would mean that perhaps Taxol might work better versus adriamycin. So, um, so our study did identify some differences as far as drug resistance proteins are concerned. You have to take all of the information and it varies from one patient to the next. So uh, one patient could exhibit low RM1 and um, high topo2a, which means maybe adriamycin would be helpful and maybe gemcitabine. Also, if you look at ERCC1, um, maybe a carboplatinum might be better. Um, but it does vary from individual to individual. But if you look, if you utilize a multi-platform approach, which includes looking at the proteins that are overexpressed or underexpressed, you could design a combination strategy based on your molecular markers.